Well, this was chaos. Um, guys, <laughs> I don't know what to start with. I am just shocked at how disastrous last night really went. Now, I know a lot of people are going to comment me down below and saying, Oh, you are wrong with your predictions. <laughs> okay, name a single person that predicted Hun Cow to lose by only six, but at the same time, Bobert loses, at the same time, Harold loses, at the very same time, the Senate race in Connecticut is within 15, voted basically as the same margin as Colorado, Illinois was almost within 15, at the same time, Washington's a 14-point lead for Murray, with Ron Johnson at two with a two-point lead, and Rubio almost winning by 20. Guess what? You can't name a single person. Not a single person predicted this shit show. And if they claim they did, they're full of it. Nobody seriously predicted this. This is the swing map. I don't know what just happened. I, well, I kind of do. I shouldn't say that. I just don't get... Some of these swings, but we got to discuss it because I think it's time we really have a question about 2024 and our strategies because guys, the strategy we're doing with just election day votes, it needs to stop. I know, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, but, but my, my, my election security. Yes, there's still problems with certain parts of the systems we have for elections. But guess what? We cannot keep letting Democrats get these massive mail-in vote leads. We just can't. If we had our own mail-in voting operation where we help people vote, you know, kind of do what Democrats do, we wouldn't get crushed in mail-in voting, and then the election day vote, which would still favor us, would help us get over the top easier. And you want proof of this strategy hurting us? Look at Pennsylvania. Oz lost this race because of the early votes. If it wasn't for that, he would have become the next senator of Pennsylvania. He would have. People saying that, oh, well, Oz was lost by 150,000. Guess what? Almost 700,000 people voted before the debate. And the majority of them, the, the almost 80% of them, voted Fetterman. What percent of them went to vote in? What percent of them would have voted for Oz if it wasn't for the debate before? That's my question. And that's what I'm saying, folks. This strategy of just, oh, we're going to just keep bail on election day is not working. Now, in a couple states like Nevada and Arizona, it's looking good for us. But these are extreme circumstances. We can't keep doing this in Wisconsin. Can't keep doing this in Pennsylvania. But that's my quick tangent about this strategy we're doing about early voting, election day voting. Just do what the left does with early voting. We can boost rural turnout much more. That could cancel out this bullshit the Democrats are currently doing. I'm not alleging anything. I'm just saying we're not doing it while Democrats just do it all the time. So let's play their game with it. But we got to discuss the House because the Senate, it, there's a lot of question marks. Johnson won. Stop this. Call it. Most places have called already. New York Times, you're on drugs. Georgia, it's been called to a runoff. Here we go again. Alaska, that's going to be a close one. That absolutely will be a close one. But we're getting a Republican either way. Nevada, a big vote dump came in. Laxle expanded his lead a little bit. It's looking like he's going to hold on. It'll be very close. But I think you hold on. Arizona. This is going to be the close one. This is going to be the one that's going to come down to the wire. And if the batches continue the way they're going, Masters may pull it off. So in the Senate, outside of Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, I can't get over New Hampshire. Outside of these two states, the Senate wasn't really that bad for the Republicans. Yes, it's probably going to be, we're probably going to get, or... I think we're going to get a majority, just not as big as I would have wanted. But I would settle for 51, maybe 52. Because the runoff in Georgia, 
I think it's going to help Walker. I'll make a whole video on it, but I think we have a serious shot again in the majority. It just won't be as big as we thought. But the biggest L really were the governorships. Now, there are some MVPs of last night when it comes to these governorships. I cannot ignore them because they may have saved our asses in the house. So let's start in the great state of Florida. My man DeSantis. I said some stuff I said about DeSantis, you know, being kind of an establishment shill a couple years ago. Yes, I said that. But in the past couple of, past year or so, he's been really growing on me. And last night, he proved why. He and another governor saved us in the house. Look at what he did to Charlie Crist in Miami Dade. Palm Beach flipped. Broward was within 15. He nearly won orange. This is where Orlando is. And this isn't a fluke either. Rubio did maybe two points worse than DeSantis. DeSantis did a phenomenal job across the board. Did great in Leon County. Did great in Alusha. Did great in Duval. He did great across the board. And it helped us in many key house races. I mean, look at this. Look at some of these house races. For example, District 7. Mills won by 19. You look at District 13. Luna kind of underperformed, but still won, mostly because of DeSantis. We did also phenomenal in the Miami-Dade area. Florida was a red tsunami. And there were a couple other states that were the same. Let's go to New York, who may have the biggest MVP of the night. Lee Zeldin. He gave up his job in Congress. And he may have saved he saved us in the House. DeSantis kind of, but Zeldin single-handedly welded us to a House majority. It's going to be small, but we're going to get it. Look at how good he did in New York City. He did phenomenal. Sure, it wasn't the amount he needed in some areas to win. For example, I think... He did underperform Manhattan a little bit, but look at the Bronx. Look at Queens. He almost cracked 40%. And this is going to get closer because there are some votes still outstanding. But Zeldin, look at some of these rural northern districts. District 22, 100% was because of Zeldin. District 19, same deal. Look at Long Island. We swept all the Long Island houses. Sure, New York Times haven't called it yet, but... It's going to be Republican. All of these are flipping. And you also got a place like District 17. Maloney's gone. He conceded. Everything was a phenomenal night for Republicans. And in the State House or State Assembly and the State Senate, Republicans destroy the supermajority Democrats have assumed. I think in the State Assembly, and they're doing good in the State Senate. Look, I still love Trump. But I'm having some questions about who should be the president or the nominee in 24. Zeldin? DeSantis? Zeldin was able to combine the suburban base, all right, the suburban Republican base in a place like Nassau County, a place like Suffolk and Long Island. But at the same time, did great with independence in New York City. But also, he kept the Republican base out in the rural parts of the state. He is better than DeSantis. That's my hot take. He is a much stronger candidate than DeSantis. And quite frankly, he may be better on the issues. That's the weird part. He found a formula in New York. And this is not a fluke. Look at the Senate race. Schumer got is going to be within 15. I thought he was going to win by, you know, 20. He's going to win by less than 15. And sure, there's still a lot of New York City votes left. But either, either way, Zeldin created a pathway to potentially win New York. Sure, we didn't win it this cycle. We came damn close. We came damn close. And we didn't win any of the statewide races, but it was still a great night for Republicans in New York. But for the rest of the House... Tom Emmer and Kevin McCarthy need to go. This is a disgrace. This part, I do not blame on Trump whatsoever. Anybody that blames the House on Trump, that's stupid. Sure, blame him, 
Blame him partially for the governor's races and the Senate elections. But the House races, this is 100% of McCarthy and Tom Emmer, the clown that runs a freaking National Republican House Committee. It's a scam. He sucks. He funded these freaking D plus 20 races, you know, in a place like, I think it was Oregon first or something like that. It was one of these Oregon districts, a couple in, you know, Connecticut and Massachusetts. Yes, some were close than expected. Connecticut fifth. But that was because you had a great candidate who's running against not a good Democrat. The whole point of Tom Emmer is supposed to help people like Zach Nunn. Help people like Easter Kane Joy. Help people like Harrell, who are in Democrat or slightly competitive seats. Not D plus 20 seats. Help somebody like Bo Hines. He got shafted the most. He's the Derek Van Orden in this cycle. And Van Orden unironically won, so that's kind of funny. But you get the point. Tom Emmer did not fund the correct candidates. And this is what we need to focus on in the future. Do not put this much money in these basically unwinnable races, but put jack shit in the Colorado 8th. Nothing into a place like Oregon 5th, Oregon 4th. Instead, they funded some very unrealistic places. And McCarthy's in deep trouble. I've heard, you know, from a couple people, Steve Scalise may be leading a coup in the caucus. We may not even have McCarthy as a speaker. The caucus is that pissed off. And with Republicans not having the biggest House majority, the Freedom Caucus is essentially going to run everything. This is a great, honestly, look, we're going to get a House majority. We may get a Senate majority, but this may have been a blessing in disguise. It showed us we cannot get complacent. We cannot push this bullshit of, oh, we're going to fund Biden plus 20 seats or R plus 50 seats, but not go after people like Sheriff Davids. How did she win? I don't freaking know. But you get the point, everybody. This was not a good election night whatsoever. But there were some silver linings. Places like California, Florida, New York, North Carolina to an extent. The Republican base got out and voted en masse. So we just got to see what happens because we're probably going to get like 225 in the House. I'm just being honest with you guys. Hopefully it's 230, but I really don't see it. But guys... I wanted to thank you so much for supporting the channel, all that good stuff. I am still kind of bummed out about my prediction stuff. I'm very sorry about not being that correct on the governor's map, not good at the house map. Set a map, places like Pennsylvania, New Hampshire weren't that great, but yeah. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching the first postmortem, kind of the initial reactions of last night. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.